When it comes to shopping for a camera monitor, it can be pretty overwhelming because quite frankly, there are a ton of options out there on the market. Now for me, when I'm looking for a monitor, I have kind of two main considerations. Number one is price. I'm not made of money, most people aren't. So budget is definitely a concern. And then features, do I need things like SDI, do I need HDMI, or do I need both? Exposure tools, do I need false color and a waveform or, or, or zebras or, or, or tools like that? And then focusing, do I need focus assist and focus peaking? Uh, there are a ton of other different tools and, and things that, that and features that you need to consider when looking for a camera monitor. And then you kind of got to marry those two up and get all those features and that price and try to find the best bang for your buck. Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about the OC G7 monitor, which I think is the best bang for buck monitor out there. And it is the monitor that I recommend to anyone out there looking for a camera monitor, especially a seven inch monitor. What's going on y'all? My name is Tyler Edwards. I'm a filmmaker based out of Colorado. And in this video, we're going to talk about the OC G7 monitor and why I think it is the best bang for buck and, and, and the best monitor that I would recommend out there for anybody looking to get a on-camera monitor, especially, like I said, a seven inch monitor. So first up, I'm just gonna talk about the monitor, kind of the layout and all that kind of stuff. This is a seven inch monitor that is 3000 nits. Yes, 3000 nits, that's a whole bunch of nits, which means it's a really bright monitor. No matter what time of day, you can see it out in bright daylight and have no problems. Don't even need a sun hood, really, because it's so bright. The only reason you maybe need a sun hood, which comes in the kit, is to avoid reflections, because this kind of is a, a reflective uh, screen right here. But it is a 1920 by 1200 resolution screen, but it, it does accept a 4K signal. So that's why you see 4K right here. Now on the front, you have a joystick, which allows you to navigate through the menus and also adjust things like the backlight brightness and all of that good stuff. Now this is a pretty lightweight monitor. It's got a polycarbonate exterior shell, but inside it actually has an aluminum skeleton inside, aluminum frame inside that helps with rigidity and, and overall build quality. And in that frame, on the top and on the bottom right here, you have quarter 20 mounts right here with these locating pins, which is really nice to have. And like I said, it is mounted, it is built into the aluminum frame instead of the polycarbonate exterior. So you have that rigidity and you don't have to worry about this thing breaking off or the, or the mount snapping off or something like that. Now on the back, you have SDI in and SDI out as well as HDMI in and out. Now, one thing to note is you cannot cross convert. So if you're using SDI in, you cannot send HDMI out. However, if you're using HDMI HDMI in, you can do HDMI out. Same with SDI, you can do SDI in and out. Up here, you have your power switch to turn the monitor on and off. And now moving on to this side, you have your powering options. You have a locking barrel pin type connection here. And in the kit, you actually get a D-tap cable as well as a AC brick so you can power it off mains. And right here, you have a single battery plate that accepts Sony NPF style batteries. And then the other cool thing is you actually, in the kit, you get this right here, which is a passive V-mount adapter plate. It actually fits right over the NPF battery plate and then with some included screws, you can lock it in and then put a V-mount battery plate and then with the included D-tap cable, you can power it that way. So if you are out on location and or maybe you're a first AC or something and you wanna power it for much longer than your L-series batteries can, then you can definitely power it off D-tap, which is really cool. The other thing with powering it is you can, with the D-tap power cable, if you have a, a cinema camera or something with a V-mount battery plate or something that has D-tap outs, you can use that cable to power it here to kind of keep the, the rig more lightweight instead of having to put a battery on the back. Now around the corner from the joystick, you have a remote port and a headphone jack so you can monitor audio. And then on this side, you have an SD card slot which you can use to upload firmware as well as load custom lookup tables. Now the monitor itself ships inside this hard shell case which is a really nice touch. And in it, you get those power cables that I mentioned as well as a little magic arm and then a sun hood as well. Okay, well now that we've kind of given a little walkthrough of the monitor, what I want to do now, instead of boring you with, with all the, the features and everything, into this thing, I will just list them all right here. So you can kind of pause it and read it if you want to. But what I wanted to do is kind of talk about a, a few things that for me make this uh, kind of a standout monitor, why I would recommend this monitor to, to anybody out there. And, and quite frankly, why I think it's the best bang for buck monitor out there. Now, the first thing is the fact that this is a 3000 nit monitor. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's 
bright. That's pretty much all you need to know. You can see this thing in any kind of daylight, no matter what, it is just so bright. In fact, I think it might be the brightest monitor out there on the market right now. The reason why it's so nice to have is because, like I said, you can see this out in any daylight conditions without the need of a sun hood. Now, it does come with a sun hood, so if you're getting any kind of you know, nasty reflections or anything like that, you can put a sun hood over it. But really, at the end of the day, I don't use the sun hood because of how bright this monitor is outdoors. Up next are the input output options. So this has SDI and HDMI. Now, most of my cameras have SDI and I prefer to use SDI when I can because it's a more professional and just a more secure connection. However, you also have HDMI in and out as well. So you can use it with cameras like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras and stuff that only have HDMI. Additionally, it's really nice that it has an HDMI and SDI out so you can send a signal out from this monitor if you want. However, one thing to note is you cannot cross convert between the two. So if you're using SDI in, you have to use SDI out. You cannot cross convert to HDMI and then vice versa. Next up is build quality of this monitor. Now it is a very lightweight monitor thanks to its polycarbonate construction. However, Inside, it has an aluminum frame, which really helps with rigidity and also mounting. Now more on with the aluminum frame in here, helping with the rigidity, it has the quarter 20 thread threaded into the aluminum as opposed to the plastic. And this really helps with camera mounts. So you know that you know, it just kind of gives you a peace of mind that it's not gonna snap off or something like that. Now I have this monitor mount right here made by Andy Cine, and it has these locating pins right here. And the reason why I really like that is when you install it, you got it screwed in, you're never gonna have the issue of the threads backing out because you have these locating pins keeping it secure. So whether you have this on a, a hot shoe or cold shoe mount, or you're using the magic arm to, to get it off side of the camera, you don't have to worry about the threads backing out, which, and, uh, and I have some pretty expensive monitors as well, and I have that problem and it's, it's pretty annoying. So the fact that they have these little locating pins here is very convenient and very nice to have. Okay, and the last thing I wanna talk about is the powering options you have for this monitor. Now included with kit, you have an AC power brick that you can plug straight into the back of this monitor and power it off of mains power. Or you have the Sony NPF style battery plate, which those batteries are pretty affordable and, and most people have those in their kit as well. Or you can use this guy right here. So this is a passive V mount battery plate that actually screws right over the NPF style battery plate. So you can see right here, there are two screws up here up top and then there's one right here that you actually unscrew because you get a longer screw for this and it screws right in there and it's very secure and you can power it via D-tap power from a V-mount battery. So you slide the V-mount battery on top of this, then you use the included D-tap cable to this barrel pin connector right here and then you can power this thing for hours and hours and hours and not have to worry about it dying. So if you have like a director's monitor or maybe maybe a client monitor or something, you can power with V-mount and not really have to worry about it dying, which I really like and it's very convenient to have. Or if a first AC is using it, for pulling focus, uh, they can slap on a, a high capacity battery and just not have to worry about worry about it dying and they can power other things like a transmitter and all that kind of good stuff right on the monitor and have a pretty tidy little rig. So that is pretty much all I'm going to talk about with features that I like. I mean, I, there, there are a lot of things I like about this monitor, but these are those kind of the, the main standout features of this monitor. Now, there is one thing that you have to, to have to know and you have to consider when, when looking at this monitor and it's the fact that it only accepts up to a 4K 30p signal. Now, for some people that may be a deal breaker. For me, it's actually not been an issue at all because my camera, like the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro G2, sends out the project frame rate instead of the video frame rate over SDI. So I shoot in 24p almost exclusively. And because of that, because of that project frame rate, it's only sending out the project frame rate. It's not sending out the video frame rate. So even if I'm shooting at 300 frames per second, for example, I'm just still able to view everything on this monitor, no problem. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't have the issue of, of needing to monitor in 4K 60. However, if you're shooting in 4K 60 and, and that's what your deliverable is, then that is something you need to consider. And this monitor just unfortunately will not work for you in that case. Well, anyways, that is pretty much all I'm gonna talk about this monitor. It is a very, very good, very bright, very well built monitor that I highly recommend picking up and adding to your kit. It's a seven inch monitor. Seven inch monitors are awesome. Once you use a seven inch monitor, it's very, very hard to go back to a five inch monitor. Well, anyways, guys, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.